Hello and welcome to Animation Flash Lesson 5, the Motion Editor. And this is be this will be our last uh, lesson for Chapter 8. Now what I went ahead and done, as I've done in similar ones that get a little bit more complex, is I went ahead and I, and I actually did the assignment beforehand to give you an idea of what this will actually look like and what our end goal is. You'll notice this is very similar where we left off. We have the play button that actually plays the animation where the dragonfly is flying from this tree along the motion path that we set it to follow the motion path to this tree back here and that was after we created the animations for these particular leaves. Now what we're doing is we're working with this particular animation and we are modifying things on a more fundamental layer using the motion editor and you'll see kind of down here where I have the motion editor open already. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push the play button so you have a general idea of what this thing's going to look like. It is going to continue this, uh, mis I keep wanting to call it a mosquito, it's a dragonfly. It'd be a really weird lesson if it was about a mosquito. One might even say it sucked, but if you take a look at the mosquito, it actually goes, oh, dragonfly, it actually goes from this tree to this tree, and then watch what happens when I push the play button here. You'll notice it kind of flies off and disappears, and that movement of the play button is actually uh, based off of our motion uh, editor, so I'll go ahead and close this and we'll take a look. So I start with dragonfly 2. And the very first thing I end up doing is I click on my timeline. Now, I'm going to bring up my timeline a little bit so we can take a look. And it says, uh, click frame one in the button layer, insert a motion tween. So here's my uh, button layer. I'm going to click frame one right here. And I want to insert, I want to do insert motion tween. And I want to click frame 30 right here, and I'm going to insert a keyframe. So insert timeline keyframe. So now I've created a motion between the two on the button layer. All right, uh, let's see, change the view to fit. All right, uh, we want to click the motion editor. So I'm on this particular line, and then I want to click the motion editor. Now I've got some items that are on the motion editor itself, and I'm specifically changing the motion, the criteria of the item, which is our play button, uh, with the motion editor. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this upward so I can see more of it. Now what they're doing is they're giving you a series of pre-made or presets that you modify these things and you'll see kind of how it's modified as it goes through. So uh, the very first thing, um, it says click the viewable frames value at the bottom of the motion editor and change the value to 30. So what I'm going to do is at the very bottom of my um, motion editor, it's you should see where it says viewable frames and let me just move this down a little bit so you can see it right here. This is my viewable frames and I'm going to change this to 30. So what happens is I can actually see or get close to seeing my right now there's 29 frames because apparently that's where I left off on but you can see all 30 frames. So this is all my 30 frames. It says in the basic motion area, so I look in my basic motion, I've got my transformation um, I'm going to scroll all the way up, and here's my basic motion. I want to click the Y value, and I want to type 80. So here's my Y value, and you'll notice right here, this gives me an idea of what's going on with the animation. And my Y value, I'm going to change to 80. Now watch what happens to that line that represents my motion. It actually changes what's going on with that particular Y value. The button symbol on stage moves in a graph line and the motion editor moves. I'm going to change the Z rotation to 320 and that's going to actually give me that spinning motion as it disappears into the distance. So there's 320. It says in the transformation area verify the link for X and Y scales is not broken. So in my transformation, I scroll all the way down, here's my transformation. I want to verify that the link for X and Y is not broken and I want to change my X scale to 10%. So here's my X scale to 10%. You'll notice this also scales, notice it gets really, really, really tiny as a result. Uh, in the eases area, change a simple slow value to 100. So I'm going to scroll down, and my simple or slow value, I'm going to change to 100, meaning it's going to change that. Now, you'll notice at some point in time, I went from frame 15, from frame 30 to frame 15. I'm not sure why I did that. Um, so everything's going to take place. I think it's going to take place a lot quicker than it would have in the other, but that's okay. Uh, let's see, da, da, da. click control, test, and then in flash pro professional. So I'm going to control, test movie, in flash professional, and perfect. It's not too terribly bad, but notice it happened a lot quicker than my 
Dragonfly 2, which if I do, this is the one that I origin, originally did. And this is all my 30, and you'll notice it happens about roughly the same time the other Dragonfly gets there. Whereas in my Dragonfly 2, which is the one I accidentally had clicked 15 frames on, you notice it happens much sooner, which, uh, you know, hey, I clicked on 15, there you go. But it happens much sooner and kind of hovers there for a little while because it happens about 15 or half the way through. It says close the flash player window, which I did. Um, it says point to the keyframe in frame 30 on the X coordinate graph line. So my X coordinate graph line, which is right here. And I want to drag the line up to change a value to 420. Right now it's 401. Um, now normally, of course, this would be at the 30 line where you should be doing it as opposed to me who didn't do it on the right line, but that's okay. So I'm going to move this up to 430. You'll notice the pixels, or excuse me, 420. You'll notice that the pixels are moving up right there. And <laughs> I could have also just typed rather than go through all this mess right here. I can just come in here. Oh, look. There it is. Much less work. Okay. So, and your screen should resemble figure 30, except, of course, it should all the way be out to 30. Uh, frame 30 as opposed to frame 15, which I started it on. So we're going to do our control test movie in Flash Professional. And notice it happens a lot more around in this area here, and it happens a lot quicker. Whereas yours should actually look, here's my um, motion, my motion editor, and you'll see how all my motions actually go out to frame 30. And now I come along and do control, test movie, in Flash Professional, and it all coordinates a little bit better. All right, so that actually concludes Chapter 8, Lesson 5, edit in animation using the motion editor. Uh, the next chapter I believe we'll move on is to is 9. Make sure to do the assigned skills reviews and things along those lines. Uh, if you have any particular questions for me, by all means, let me know. However, we are well on our way to accomplish the task at hand, and I appreciate your time and your efforts. Have a good day. We'll see you in Chapter 9.